Okay. Mm -hmm. Morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the first meeting of the Education and Skills Committee. Um, can I just remind everybody to make sure the mobile phones are switched off since they do interfere with the system? Apologies have been received from Tavish Scott, Ross Greer, and Liz Smith. The first item on the agenda is declaration of interests, uh, and that's to allow committee members to declare any interests that they have that are relevant to the work on the committee. Um, there is background information on the note from the clerk on, on paper one. Um, I'll start by declaring my interests, and then we'll go around the table from my left. Um, I have no specific interest to declare other than those that are uh, already declared in my register of interests. Oh, it's me now, sorry, apologies. <laughs> Thank you, convener. Um, I have no other interest to declare other than what is uh, noted in my register of interests. I have no other interest to declare other than what is noted in my register of interests. Hey, I'm a member of the Scottish Social Services uh, Council and currently a councillor in North Lancashire Council. I have no other interest to declare other than what is already declared in my register of interests. And I have no other interest to declare other than what's in my register of interests. Uh, I have no other uh, interest to declare other than what's already contained in the Register of Interests. The one thing I would want to note was my membership of um, the General Teaching Council. Thank you. Um, for the three members that are absent, I'm sure they'll be picked up at the next meeting of the, of the committee. The second item on the agenda is uh, the most important one, the choice of the convener. Um, the procedure is explained in Paper 2. And the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish National Party are eligible for nomination as convener of this committee. Now, I understand that James Dornan is the party's nominee for this post. Do we all agree that James Dornan uh, is our convener? Agreed. Agreed. In that case, James, congratulations. And uh, if I can vacate the chair and hand across to you for the remainder of the session. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Um, item three on the agenda is the choice of deputy convener. At this point, I'd, uh, I'd like to thank all the members of the committee for agreeing my nomination as convener of the Education and Skills Committee. Very much look forward to working with you all in this role and to working well collectively on the important subjects that we will need to address over the next five years. But before I move on to the next item of business, I'd like to briefly pay tribute to my predecessor in this role, Stuart Maxwell. Stuart was and is uh, a close friend and colleague of mine, and I had the pleasure to work for him uh, for a number of years, so I, I know just how committed he was to education, and as a substitute member of the committee, I saw for myself the good job he did as convener, so I have big shoes to fill in that role. Um, I also would like to thank all the other members of the former committee for their excellent service. Now, the committee's next task is to choose a deputy convener. Uh, the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish Labour Party are eligible for nomination as deputy convener of this committee. And I understand that Joanne Lamont is the party's nominee for this post. Do we agree to choose Joanne, Joanne Lamont as our deputy convener? Yes. Thank you. I congratulate Joanne on her appointment. And I look forward to working with her in particular in her role as deputy convener. The next item of business, item four, is uh, to consider the legacy paper from our previous committee. Legacy papers are a good way for a new committee to find out what work was undertaken by our predecessors and to consider the ideas they put forward for what we might like to undertake. I'll open the floor to members shortly, taking one from each party initially perhaps, but I'd like to thank the previous committee and I suggest at this stage that we note their ideas and take them into account in the next agenda item and over the coming weeks as we discuss our work programme. I invite members to contribute, starting perhaps with Joanne as our deputy convener. If she has any comments you'd like to make. I just think there is such a wide range of issues that we can look at. It would be useful to see what skills and interests people in the, in the committee have. I'm particularly interested in understanding properly what we mean by the attainment gap because I don't think it's just young people who, for some reason, don't access university, but actually are failed at much earlier in the education system. So there are young people with very good skills, 
very good qualifications who don't manage to achieve the place that they want, but there are also lots of young people who fall off the radar an awful lot earlier than as a particular interest of mine. Thank you very much, Ross. Thank you very much, Convener. Um, it was a really helpful report, again, being an entirely new member as well, to look at the, the work um, that was undertaken by the committee in the previous Parliament. Um, so I found the legacy report really helpful. Um, my particular interest um, in relation to the north-east of Scotland, uh, the region that I represent, um, there's a growing skills gap, um, particularly in the energy sector, um, and also um, we've seen real challenges with that. So it's, it's looking at what we could do as a committee uh, to look at, you know, through colleges, further education to help, and also trying to get young people into experience and apprenticeships as well, try and meet that. Um, so that's one thing I've got a particular interest in um, and look forward to, to, to looking at as part of the committee. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anybody from the SNP that would like to comment at this stage? Yeah. Um, I, my particular interest is in um, sharing good practice across colleges. There's Each college seems to, you know, it has its own autonomy and, and how they operate, and some colleges are doing things very well, and some perhaps could be, be doing with actually sort of like, you know, that knowledge being shared across the, the sector. Um, yesterday in my speech, I made uh, reference to North East Scotland College's partnership with RGU, which is one of the great success mm -hmm. stories. And I'd like to see um, have people been brought in to share their good practice and maybe some visits to colleges, mm -hmm. which have been seen to actually be hitting their targets in terms of attracting people, like, like Joanne was saying, um, who have uh, traditionally not had access or not been traditionally um, encouraged into further and higher education and how other colleges have managed to do that, bridging that gap. Thanks very much. Daniel, you want to? I could do. I echo a lot of what's been said already. I mean, I think, um, I mean, following on from specifically what's in the paper, I mean, I think the attainment gap is, is clearly one of the absolute overarching priorities, uh, both in this parliament, but more generally. And I think that that is a, a point of, of, of real consensus across the party. So I, I, I would definitely like to see that taken up and taken forward. I think within that, I have a specific interest around uh, specific uh, learning uh, difficulties and disabilities. So, for example, <clears throat> uh, looking at how uh, we can better um, uh, adapt and, and cater for, for children with uh, learning difficulties such as ADHD, dyslexia, and specific uh, learning difficulties. That's a specific interest of mine. Um, uh, beyond that, I think looking at some of the work that, that, that the committee uh, took forward with colleges, again, skilling and reskilling, and it echoes some of the things that Gillian's saying, but I think it more, more brought and, and Ross, um, looking at uh, how we equip the workforce for economic changes in the future. Uh, as I sort of comically noted yesterday in my, my speech in the debate, um, some people accuse me of being paranoid about Skynet takeover, but I think automation and, and the increasing use of digital technologies in the economy will have a big impact on employment. And I think the way that we reskill our workforce, not just skill young people, I think is of critical importance. And finally, I have a, have a real interest in, in childcare in early years and just making sure that we do our, our very best at that earliest stage um, and right the way through um, education so that we help people be as economically active as possible. Thank you. <laughs> Colin? Clearly, the legacy document is a, a quality piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> there speaks the next a member of the last guy. <laughs> However, um, looking at it specifically, one of the areas that I felt that the previous committee did some good work and a little bit of innovative work was on children and care. And uh, I'd like to think that this committee would find the time to continue on with that element. I think there's a lot of work still to be done in there. Um, I, also, I also like to think that... Uh, the Education Committee might find the opportunities to spend time out in the community yeah. at times. Uh, I know there was a number of fact-finding visits and so on were done previously, but perhaps the committee from time to time should actually meet in different areas. I know there's expense, I know there's, uh, I know there's logistics and everything involved around this, but I think it would be a, a good exercise in democracy for people in Glasgow, Dundee and so on to see the Education Committee meet their at least once in the next session, you know. I, I, I just throw that out as a, as a possible idea, but primarily, I think uh, I'd like to see us building on some of the good work that was done around children in care. Thank 
Here. Um, I think I'd just like to echo um, what was said by Joanne and Daniel in terms of the attainment gap. Um, as a former secondary school teacher, that's a real priority uh, for me. Um, and certainly, I think Joanne spoke about attainment and what we mean by attainment. That's really important. We often talk about uh, educational jargon uh, in Parliament. And I think actually when you speak to people on the street, they don't necessarily know what we mean by attainment. And it's not necessarily just about uh, qualifications. It's about you know achievement in school, how we measure that, uh, other contributions that pupils make. Uh, and certainly in the senior phase, that's something that I'm interested in. Um, as well, um, having worked for Education Scotland, I'm interested in how we use partners such as Education Scotland and the SQA uh, to work with local authorities to close the attainment gap. That's something that I'm really interested in as well. Thank you. I'm quite excited about this committee. It's um, very wide ranging, um, but my uh, specialist interest, if you like, is in uh, child protection. And I would back up what Colin said as well. Um, children in care. I think we did make a lot of progress in the last Parliament. Um, I said that as if I was there, but you know, I think the Parliament made a lot of uh, progress uh, last time around, and I would like to see that continued as well, as well as looking at the wider child protection um, implications. Thanks very much for that. Uh, clearly, there was quite a lot came out of that very short discussion. I suspect that we're going to have lots of, of uh, yeah, lots of work to to do over the next five years. So I, I thank the member for the contributions. The next item of business, business uh, agenda item five, is uh, the cons to consider taking our work programme discussions that follow in private. It's commonplace for committees to have such discussions in private. Are we agreed to do so? Yes. Thank you very much. That then concludes the public part of the meeting. I will wait until the public gallery is cleared. <laughs> Could be some time. <laughs> Thank you.